Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I shall, we shall, bless his holy name. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad therein. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exhort his name together. The Lord bless you and yours. Again, God has indeed smiled upon us. And for that, we can't help but to be grateful and altogether thankful. Let's go before the Lord in prayer, if you will. Righteous God, our Father, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, again, we thank you for your saving grace and your keeping power. We thank you for granting us this day, for this is the day that you have ordered, you made, and we acknowledge you even now in this moment, in this hour. We ask in kind, Father, that you would bless and anoint the ears of those who have tuned in for such a time as this, that we may indeed hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. And we realize that we are the church. We are the believers. We are your children. We are your disciples. Even now, bless those who are caught up in a series of storms and they are confused and baffled. But I pray, kind Father, that they would hear and that they would know that you are the master of the sea. Calm their fears. Pray, O oh God, that you would meet their every need, even those who are in the hospital, those who are subject to go uh, through various treatments, operations of all kinds. For you, the doctor that have never lost a patient, you, the lawyer that have never lost a case, we trust you then, we trust you now, and we will trust you, yea, even tomorrow. Let your perfect will be done here and now. Sanctify the food as we prepare to go forth and serve your people. Give us clarity of speech. Allow the food to uh, the hero be nourishment, strength, and power. Let your perfect will be done. We'll be careful to give your name, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, we thank you for joining us in this fashion. We want to encourage you to come closer. Call a friend, call a neighbor, call an enemy. Come, let us reason together. Turn with us as we go back into God's word. We're excited about what he has done in that he has kept us from all danger. He's shielded and he's protected us over the highways and the byways, the airways, the waterways, etc. And even now, he's preparing our hearts that we may once again receive his word. For there's power in the word. There is deliverance in the word. For the word will pick you up and turn you around and put your feet on solid ground and put you back on the right path. For some has fallen, and you've heard the commercial, when the old lady said, I'm falling and I can't get up. Some of you have fallen, but there is a God who can lift you right where you are. He can come in and sup with you just if you just open your heart to him. He'll meet your every need, said Paul. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Meet us, if you will. We're going to begin reading tonight over in the gospel according to St. Matthew. Matthew was indeed a tax collector by trade, by profession. 
But Matthew made up in his mind, having met Jesus, that Jesus was trustworthy and he put his trust and life in the hand of the Savior, the Messiah. And that's what my role is tonight, is to somehow or another with the help and by the grace of God, if I can influence you to put your trust in the Lord for such a time as this. And when I say put your trust in the Lord, I don't mean partially, but I mean to put all of your eggs in one basket. For there is only one plan, there is only one way. For Jesus is that way, for he's the way, St. John 14, Verse 6 says, He's the way, the truth, and He is the life. The only way to heaven, the only way out of here, it's not the Democratic way, it's not the Republican way, it's not the Liberals' way, it's not the way of a denomination, an organization, or be it as it may, an affiliation, a club, a group, a fraternity, a frat some secret society no ma'am no sir it's not an appeal it's not in a vacation oh beloved peace and serenity and the way out of this colossal mess that we're in this maze is through Jesus Christ our Lord for he is the king we're led to believe by way of scripture and revelation they put on servant clothes in order to lead mankind out of sin and in degradation back to everlasting life back to the maker back to his original home which was there in glory where he chose and he selected us to be in him before the foundation of the world. So meet us, if you will, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. We're going to begin reading, if you don't mind, at verse uh, 12. Going to begin reading at verse 12. Um, I like verse 12 because verse 12, what it does is kind of set some ground rules as to how we are to treat others as a believer. If you're a believer, then there's a way to treat other people, if you will. So I want to read some from the Easy Read Bible. It breaks it down and uh, it simplifies it, if you will. And then I want to go to the King James Version, and we want to compare notes and be a blessing to you tonight as we endeavor to impress upon your heart as we travel down this road, or may I say up the road to those of you who are uh, uh, endeavoring to go to heaven. <coughs> the road to heaven is up. And whenever you're going uphill, it takes more energy. It takes more perseverance. It takes more of everything within you to press onward and upward. If you're going down, you can roll down. You can fall down. You can give up. Little but no effort as far as going if I can use the term without you all citing me for cursing, because some people use this term in the wrong term and then not in the proper setting, if you will. Those of you who are on your way to hell, doesn't take much energy. It doesn't take little but no fight. Just surrender to the enemy. Just surrender to the world. Just surrender to the environment. Surrender to your habits, and 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 your habits will uh, consume you. 
But those of you who desire to go to heaven, and you've heard of heaven, some of you, when you were a lad or a, 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 a little lady coming up, or a girl or a boy, so on and so forth. Well, some of us believe that heaven is a real place and so is hell. For hell was not created for uh, the saints, if you will, or believers. It was created for the devil uh, and those hell-bound angels that was kicked out and refused to obey order in heaven. And those hell uh, bound angels have influenced this generation in an, in an awesome um, undescribable way if you will um, but let's look at some 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 word here and uh, get some instructions um, as we journey up this highway to heaven the king's highway if you will where this highway has been put in place just for a faith of few. Yet there's a number that no man can number, says the revelator. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, beginning at verse 12, talks about a very important rule. Now, once you break this rule, Please understand that you will reap, believe it or not, you will reap what you sow. Now, listen again, listen again at the easy read. Do for others what you would want them to do for you. Let me read that again. Do for others. Do for others what you would want them to do for you. As a believer, as a child of God, can I talk to you for a few minutes? I just want to get your permission because nowadays, if you will, um, you have to get people permission in order to be friend them. Well, some of you are familiar with Facebook. When you send a person a friendly requests as such they have to friend you they have to receive your friendship and I'm praying that you would be kind enough to uh, befriend me tonight now don't unfriend me but again if you do wrong to others others will do wrong unto you and you will not have the wherewithal to endure the wrong that will come upon you. Many can dish it out, whatever it is, but many cannot take what they dish out. They cannot take it when it comes back because whatever comes back to you will come back to you in a greater fashion. All right. So again, Jesus is speaking as he speak to his disciples, as he speak to the followers, if you will, as he speak to the believers, he says, do for others what you would, what you would want them to do for you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and the teaching of the prophet. Now, we're going into verse 13. 13 says thus, and 13 uh, and, 15, and 14, if you will, deals with the way to heaven. The way to heaven. You can enter true life only through the narrow gate. You can enter true life only through the narrow gate. The gate to hell is very wide. Listen at that. This, this is so plain, 
Holy Ghost, help me as I speak with your people. The gate to hell is very wide. And there is plenty of room on the road that leads there. Plenty of room to, to, to do you. To do what you want to do. To do what others will have for you to do. You, you, you got plenty of room. Wow. Wow. Many people go that way. Most of the people that we know are headed down the road to hell. Plenty of room. Come on. We're doing this. Everybody's doing it. You can do it too. Do a little bit. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. It's the little foxes that destroy the vine. Cocaine don't take but a little bit to get started. And it doesn't take much, brothers and sisters, to get hooked. And that's the way sin is. The enemy knows what we like, especially if you're a believer now, because you was once married to him. You have to divorce the devil. You got to give him his papers. You got to give her her papers, her walking papers. I'm, I'm done. It's over. Because if the enemy jump in bed with you, the enemy will jump in bed with someone else. And that's just the nature of the enemy. But nevertheless, the way to hell, the true way to hell, wow, deals with a lot of room. There's a lot of room to go to hell. But if you're on your way to heaven, if you're on the road to heaven, listen, you got to go through the narrow gate. That's the rough way. That's the hard way, if you will. And so, he said, many people go that way which leads to hell because there's plenty of room there. 14 says, but the gate that opens the true way, excuse me, but the gate that opens the way to true life is narrow. Wow. And the road that leads there, listen at this, is hard to follow. God got it fixed. So if you are not willing to fight for what is right, if you're not willing to struggle, then you don't deserve to go to heaven. It's no different than when the commercial comes on about the Marine. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of young men have signed up over the years to go to the Marine. And the slogan is that they are only looking for a few good men. Are you one of those men? Are you one of those women who know that in order to become a Marine, anybody can't become a Marine? It's, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And that's what I love about holiness. It's, it's a struggling way but he helps us every step of the way. He helps us. Nobody have got to struggle or go through by themselves because the Lord has made us a promise as a child of God. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, says the Lord. I appreciate that. I, 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 I'm, I'm grateful and thankful. Uh, he meet our every need. He even told us that the uh, battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. And so all we have to do is follow. That's all we have to do is follow. And so the latter part of verse 14, according to the easy read, says, again, in the road that leads there, talking about to heaven, the road that leads there is hard to follow. Only a few people find it. 
So I want to know, are you one of the few? And uh, when I was in school, there were different clubs and groups. And uh, of course, I wasn't a member of the jock club. And everybody don't fit into that club. Everybody is not a football player. Everybody's not a basketball player or baseball or a sport, uh, an athlete, you know, uh, caught up into sports, you know. Uh, there are those who are indeed uh, what what they call them geeks. Um, so, but there's a geek club. Everybody can join the the geek club, you see. But going to heaven is designed in this road on the way to heaven. The King's Highway is a difficult way, but it's a way that we can make it only with the help and by the grace of God, the power of God, as we follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Okay, look at, if you will, 15. Now, I'm not an entertainer, so I'm not here to entertain you. And uh, I don't have a lot of words to throw out, big words, $50 words to throw out to try to tickle your fancy and to uh, keep your attention. I'm plain and simple. Uh, I'm just plain and simple. What you see is what you get. Uh, 15 says, watch this. Be careful now. Another phrase and King James used, uh, if you will, the terminology where he says, beware. That's what King James says. He said, beware. Back in to the easy read, he says, be careful of false prophets. On this road to heaven, be careful of false prophets, number one. Wow. They come to you and look gentle like a sheep. False prophets roll upon you and they befriend you. They say all the right words. They study um, uh, communication. They study, if you will, uh, semantics. They can say one thing and mean something altogether different. They study philosophy. Um, people nowadays, they can Google you and know what you like and you've never met them and they can meet you at a party and just, they can, they can do the research on your life and meet you somewhere down the road and act like they, they are God's man and God's woman and you are blown away and you don't even realize that they are, they are a distraction on the road to heaven. They're a distraction. That's all they are. And and these kind of people go to church. <laughs> Satan goes to church. Satan goes to prayer meeting. He want to know what you know so he'll know how to fight against you. That's why you have to trust in the Lord with all of thine heart all of your heart lean not to your own understanding but in all of your ways acknowledge him for he shall direct your path for the steps of a good man a good woman a good boy a good girl they are ordered by the Lord every day we ought to ask and request of the Lord order my steps in your word here am I, Lord, send me, I'll go. If you need somebody to speak to that group, if you need somebody to set an example, if you need somebody to let that light shine, here am I. If you need somebody to suffer for righteousness sake, that's what I love about the Bible. God does not try to make you think this, this is a cakewalk. He never, nobody told me you remember the songwriter said, nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe 
He bought me this far to leave me. I don't feel waste time. You remember that song? If somebody told you this the easy way, easy way, the easy road, they lied. They lied. There's there's no easy road as far as giving to heaven. But God would give you the grace, the power, the joy, the wherewithal to weather every storm. David on his way, the shepherd boy who was called and summoned to be the king, that was not an easy easy road. He had to he had to face the bear, the lion, he had to face Goliath, he had to face his brothers <laughs> who didn't think much of him because he was a little run of a boy. But God has a way of taking the nobody and making somebody out of the nobody. And he will use you to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. But you got to walk with him. You got to trust in him for such a time as this. Okay? All right. So Matthew says here, he said, be careful, beware of false prophets. For they will come to you, look, and they will look gentle like a sheep. But they are really dangerous. They are really dangerous like wolves. Now, let's look at how King James put it, the 15th verse, in case you're just joining us. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophet which come to you in sheep clothing. Few days hence, you're gonna you're going to experience somewhere in America, somewhere uh, definitely in, in America, but somewhere in the world, what they call Halloween, which is in most men's eyes, this generational uh, of young people, their eyes, it's a it's a great holiday, you know, where they worship the vampires and wishes, the, witch, the witches and the warlocks and so on and so forth. Um, and my point for, for going there is this. People are going to dress up and they're going to go to parties and groups and as much as they have been ordered, you know, only so many should meet especially indoors, you should wear a mask, you should uh, practice social distance. Those laws will be violated. I mean, you can look around now, look at the news. You know, you, you, you can't, when, when people leave God and they fail to be obedient, and that's one of the signs and that's one of the areas that we need to be aware of, uh, of, of disobeying God. It's messed up. It's terrible. And there are consequences. And some will experience repercussion. But there is hope. Because the God in whom we serve, he is a gracious, forgiving, loving, long-suffering. He's a God that is concerned about your future, your uh, spiritual welfare. So, King James says, 715, beware of false prophet which come to you in sheep clothing, but uh, inwardly they are raving wolves. And so people, even today, they will mass up, they would put on their costume and they'll make you think that they're your friend when they are the enemy in disguise. Okay, so uh, number one, be aware of false prophets. Uh, in case you want to know what false mean, false mean uh, untrue, untruthful, 
incorrect, wrong, dishonest. Most of the people that we have embraced as friends are dishonest. Uh, fabricate. Deceitful. Deceitful. And so they all made up like they're your friend when the first chance you get they're going to strive to take your place or to take you out so to speak okay the second area that we should be aware of go with me to chapter 10 of Matthew chapter 10 and I'm going to hasten on chapter 10 verse 17 King James this is what he says um, oh I like verse 16 as well Matthew's gospel chapter 10 verse 16 and 17 behold this is what God is saying behold I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves that's what God said I'm, I'm, I'm going to send you forth but I'm going to lead you I'm going to go before you I'm going to shield you I'm going to protect you but you got to trust him. Now, it's one thing to be sent forth. Because if you sent, then God is leading you. If you just go forth, then you're subject to being destroyed. There, there's a difference. There's a difference. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, Paul says in Romans 14, I believe it is, 8.14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So it's a difference between you just going or you went versus being sent. He said, I send you forth. Look at that. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. 17 says, But beware of men. Mankind, beware of men. Now, today, he's not just talking about male figures, but individual, male or female. There are women who are, who are just as wicked, just as evil. There are women that will take you out. There are women that will take you, my God, and, and they will stretch you to the limit who have no compassion who will set you up take your money take your house take your car take your reputation destroy your reputation take your joy take your innocence there are women who were young and they were virgin, so were their men. And these men and women came along and they violated us and you haven't been in the same since. So Lord, even now I pray for inner healing, even from the root. Bless your people, those who would hear. Go in. Perform the spiritual surgery. Take out the bitterness, the pain, the hurt, the discomfort. We pray, oh God, that you would dis destroy even the videotape of their conscience. That that thing would no longer play over and over again in their minds and in their spirit. They would no longer dream about it or meditate upon it. Break it and set them free. From the root, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council, and they will scourge you in their synagogue. And I don't have time to just talk about scourge, is how they punish you. Uh, they don't punish you like they once did. 
um, and whip, if you will. They do it from a psychological and they do it verbally. They will torment you, if you will. Um, the thing I want to say how men, especially intellectuals, there are those who pride themselves on never touching a woman, never striking a woman. Um, I don't think I ever hit a woman, and I'm, I'm not planning on to. Uh, but there are men who pride themselves on never hitting a woman, but they verbally abuse them. They beat upon them with their tongue, and they make them feel like they are nothing or nobody. And, and I'm talking about beautiful women, beautiful women, beautiful women who have a complex. And that's why when you come to the Lord, you will discover that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are special, and, and there is nobody else like you, for you are above uh, as a collective group of believers and as his children, you're above all people that are that are upon the face of the earth. So you are somebody. You're somebody special. And the Lord loves you more than you love yourselves. He loves you more than and greater than anybody else does. He came and died that you may live. He took your place. He took your place on Golgotha. He took your place out on Calvary and that's where that word scourge come from look at how they did Jesus go and look if you want to look at a movie and you're craving to watch a movie pull out the passion of Christ and even that movie does not do justice as to what they did to Jesus they beat Jesus unrecognizable they did him like they they did no other prisoner no other criminal. All right? Uh, so this is what men want to do. They want to act like they're your friends, and but they can't wait to scourge you in their synagogue, you know, before everybody. They want to embarrass you. So beware of men. Um, beware means to be, again, to be careful, to be cautious of, uh, to look out for to watch out for, to take heed, think twice of these different road signs that I'm bringing you even tonight. Beware of, let's go to Matthew 16, 6. Here you will discover that Matthew is saying, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees their doctrine, beware of their doctrine. Beware of their doctrine. Now, um, he was talking to his disciples starting in verse 5 and they thought he was alluding to them forgetting bread. The bread that you eat. Well, we eat words as well. You know, you can feed a man's conscience. You can feed a man's uh, mindset. Um, so he was not talking about natural bread. He was talking about psychological bread and spiritual bread that you feed people regarding doctrine, what you teach people. Beware of false teachings. Remember he talked about beware of the um, false prophet. False prophets then will teach you false doctrine, that which is not true. Now, Pharisee, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were a religious group of self-righteous, traditional uh, religious club, a group, and 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 I'm I'm telling you, 
they were judgmental. And, and a lot of us are like that. And the reason being is because we've been around those kind of people, you see. And that's why we need to change friend. That's why the scripture said, for if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So if you are born again, if you are spirit filled, uh, if you are a child of God, and if you've invited the Lord into your heart to take residence and to lead you and to guide you, and if you have surrendered your life to him, brothers and sisters, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please understand you need to change your, your social circles, change your friends. You need new friends. You're moving in, into a different direction now. You're going upward. Uh, you're upward bound, if you will. You're not going down. You're not uh, going to throw your life away. You're not going to drink it away. You're not going to swear it away. You're not going to gamble it away. You're not going to dance it away in the nightclubs and the this and the that and the other and the so on and so forth. Now we are in the army of the Lord and thus we must obey order. We must obey order. And so God is speaking to the church. He's speaking to his children. He's speaking to uh, the spiritual soldiers. And even those who are athlete, they would tell you that they have, they have to discipline themselves. You see, those who are on a health kick, they would tell you there are things that they have to eat. They're, they're, they drink certain beverages and they don't just live a loose life and that's what we must do as believers brothers and sisters and so again um, Matthew 16 6 says Jesus said unto them take heed look at that beware of the leaven the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees this religious group that comes around who was self-righteous and they were traditional but they were judgmental as well. So beware of these kind of people. Okay? All right. Let's move on. Another area we should be aware of as we travel down uh, life highway is uh, false leaders. Heron in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, said, Take heed, beware of the leaven, of the Pharisees and of the leaven, the leaven of Haran. Okay, Haran was a king or leader that the scribes and the Pharisees that they honored and respected and they followed, if you will, but the doctrine was false. It was erroneous. It was detrimental if you will. Um, five, beware of the hypocrites. Look in Luke's gospel, if you will. Luke chapter 12. And let's look at verse 1. Luke chapter 12. Verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathering together, innumerable multitudes of people, insomuch they trod one upon another, they trod one upon another, and began to say to the disciples first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. And the word hypocrisy comes from the word hypocrite. And hypocrite means to pretend. Two-facedness. Wow. Falseness. Double, double standard. Double standard not sincere. They look at life as 
as if though it's a game. Hypocrite. Actor, actresses always say some of the world's greatest actors and actresses is in somebody's church. Not in Hollywood. Somebody's church acting like and pretending that they are born again pretending that they're saved when they're, they're really, they're really, really not. Uh, people are one thing in the public's eye, but they're a whole nother other thing in the private, in, the, in, in, in private behind closed doors. So, so be careful. Be aware of the hypocrites. Now, um, Luke 12, 15, and he said unto them, Take heed, beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. Covetousness uh, is a word that means greed. Beware of greed. Beware of greediness. Be beware of materialism. You know, churches now and in, in so many in a, in a so-called churches is teaching to get your stuff. Well, the stuff that you get, are you willing to let go of if the Lord should come tonight? You know, we're accumulating this, we're accumulating that, and uh, we're surrounding ourselves with all kind of stuff, all kind of stuff. You name it, people are going after it if you will. Um, so covetousness is wanting what you have and willing to do whatever it takes to get not something like, but to get what you have. And uh, again, I'm telling you, some of your, your so-called friends, you, you need to beware. Beware, look out, look out, be careful of. Because on this road, this highway to heaven, your friend would try to distract you and sidetrack you to, to come this way and to come that way. They're pulling at you. They will email you. They will text you. They would do, they would do the drive-by thing. Whatever it takes to get your t attention and to get in your space. Even be careful of the women and the men who you're desiring to marry. If they don't have God as the number one, oh wow, the number one person in their lives, you can get you can marry them, and they'll have you drinking and smoking and 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 doing all kind of things that are that are contrary to the will and the plan of God for your life. So, be careful, be careful, um, be aware. Uh, look at uh, Mark's gospel, chapter 12, verse 38. And he said unto them, in his doctrine, beware of the scribe, the scribes. Now, scribes were those who were more or less like secretary. They were uh Copertists, they were clerks, if you will. Book, uh, they copy, uh, book copiers, you know, manuscripts. They dealt with manuscript and um, transcripts. And they, they would write down and they were um, copy the Mosaic law, but they didn't follow the law. You know, they would, they didn't understand it. And so he's saying, beware of the scribes which uh, love to go in to look at this. Clogging and love situations salutations in the marketplace. They love 
to display, you know, they you, you have to be you have to be aware of these people. They all over the place. You know. And they try to make you think that they're word people and they understand the scriptures and that they are of God. But be aware of them. All right, somewhere else we need to go. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, brethren, listen to this. Finally, brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous. But for you, it is safe. Verse 2 says, beware of dogs. Wow. Wow. Beware of evil workers. Beware of, look at that, consensus. Now, dog here deals with the nature of an animal. You know, some dogs, you can feed them, but if you're not careful, They'll turn on you and bite you. So he's saying, beware of these kind of people. Beware of evil workers. Workers, workers that are wicked. Workers that are sinful. Workers that are malicious. Workers that are immoral. They'll do anything. If you give them, give them an opportunity, they'll do anything. They are not good. Some people you got as a friend, they're not a good friend. They are, and you've heard this down through the years, they are foul. They are foul. So beware. He is one in the church. Beware of those who have a dog light. They are uh attitude or spirit if you will they're false teachers and they're evil evil workers evil 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 deep evil now um, concerning this dog business look at Isaiah 56 10 his watchmen are blind they are all ignorant this is how false people are. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. They act like they can bark, but they cannot bark. They are like a lion, a toothless lion. They have a roar, but they cannot bite. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They're lazy. They're lazy. And that's the way evil workers are. Yes, beware of evil workers. Now, uh, let's go back to uh, Philippians 3 2. That word, um, conscientious. Look at that. That word means shortness. So, and, and again, a lot of these people around uh, when we were in our synagogues and in our meeting places, and we called it churches in our geographical church buildings, there were people who uh, claimed to be born again and the children of God and disciples of the Lord and so on and so forth. They were this short shortness they were brief you know they, they don't want to be around you they, they they have an issue with you personally especially if you're loving especially if you're uh, truly the child of God and so uh, you, you have to be um, aware of these kind of people okay now I, I, my time has, has come to uh, a close, but 
Your assignment is to start in Colossians chapter 2 and read several, several verses over there where Paul, uh, in, in particularly uh, in Colossians 2.8, he said, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. And we're going to come back and we'll tap back into that the next time we deal with this, this particular subject matter. This is things to be aware of, part two. Things and areas of your life as a believer, as a traveler, uh, if you will, to be aware of, part two. We'll come back when God says, if he should say the same and if it should be his will, we'll come back with a part three. And we'll start with, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Very interesting. And then he goes on and talk about with the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world, yet they are not after Christ. And the church said, Amen. Kind Father, again, we thank you for smiling upon us. You saw us through another session another meal, another fellowship. Thank you for touching the hearts of your people and bringing them together to meet around this dinner table. Some people, it's breakfast time for some. It's lunch. Be it as it may, whatever time they choose to spiritually eat and dine, bless them. Sanctify the food. Allow the words to permeate their hearts in so much it will bring forth fruit, fruit that will, that will remain and fruit that you will be proud of. Let them be a tree, a fruitful tree that you can use to bring and draw men unto, unto yourself. Kind Father, teach us how to walk in victory and not defeat light and not darkness. Save the lost, revive the saved, that the world may know that we are Christians by our love is our prayer and we are your servants in Jesus name amen brothers and sisters it's been it's been fun it's been good just knowing that you're there in the privacy of your own home as you travel up and down the highway wherever you are on lunch break and you're able to get a minute or two of this the Lord be with you if this ministry has been a blessing to you, why not be a blessing to this ministry? Go to Berea, experienceberea.org. Go to the top of the page, follow the app, and there follow the direction of Giblified and share with this ministry, amen, your token of love. If God has blessed you, why not be a blessing? We have because we give. We give because we have. And may the rest of your days be the best of your days. Until next time, beloved. For you, the best is yet to come. Amen. And amen.